Hello, Oscillator Sync, and welcome to another video in the series where we take a look at tips and tricks that you might want to consider when you're building patches for the wonderful Korg monologue. So this video uh, concerns the sequencer. The sequencer on the monologue is great. 16 steps of monophonic sequencing with velocity, but what really sets it apart from its competitors, especially within its price range, are the four channels of motion sequencing. What the motion sequencing basically allows you to do is across your 16 steps is record um, up to four different sets of knob movements or switch movements actually for that matter which will then play back as you as you play back your sequence so before we get into the trick let's just for those of you that haven't seen this before let's just have take a look at how that works so i've got a fairly bog standard uh, baseline here Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my um, selector here to motion. I'm going to set uh, the sequence playing, and I'm going to hit record, and then I'm going to move some knobs around. So let's start with the cutoff. So you can hear there that we've got uh, some movement in the cutoff there. Uh, we can do it for something else, so perhaps... Uh, Perhaps we'll play with the shape knob on VCO2. And maybe the resonance control. And you can build up your sequences and have that movement and interest. Um, but what would be great is that given that we have a fairly limited envelope generator in LFO, is if we could harness that power and apply it to our normal patches. So not when we've got a sequence playing back, but just when we are playing notes. So um, let's take a look at how we might achieve that. So uh, initialize patch. Lovely, sawtooth wave. So the first thing we're going to do in order to do this little trick is we're going to record a uh, normal note sequence, which is one long note. And what's important here is that it's one long note and every single note in the sequence uh, is tied to the next one, including the ones at either end. Now, we can do that one of two ways. We can actually go in and we can play in the notes like this, hold down a, a step, press a note, and then if we hold down the step and turn up... Um, the parameter knob, the program value knob rather, uh, all the way up to tie, and we can do that for every single uh, step. Ain't nobody got time for that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to set uh, the empty sequence running. We're gonna press record. And I'm just gonna hold down a note and make sure I hold down the note for the whole sequence. And then once that's done, I'm gonna hit record to stop it recording. And if that's worked, what you should get then is a single seamless note for the whole time that the sequencer is playing. No gaps. The reason we have to hit record to stop it from recording while it's still playing back is if we were to lift the key, that would leave a gap in our sequence. And what we're looking for here is a single seamless sequence. So uh, if we play back just a double tap, we've got that. Great. So we've got a single sequence now that is one long drawing note. Okay, well, it's not much of a sequence. Uh, and how are we gonna use that to, to, to make use of our motion sequencer? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the key trig. What the key trig does is, um, in normal operation, is uh, it will play back your sequence whenever you play a key, and it will transpose the sequence based on the key that you played. So what that basically does, is it gives us the effect of being able to play a note but each time we play the note the sequence restarts but it just sounds like it's a normal note being played we can also um, start throwing um, envelopes and stuff uh, if we select the right type of envelope All of that functionality still works, although do notice that when uh, we lift the key, and we've got the decay ringing off, the sequencer stops playing. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, what can we do? Well, because we have a sequence, we can apply any of the motion controls and four channels of them. What this does for us essentially is give us four extra LFOs, which is amazing because uh, even having two LFOs would be uh, pretty nice for a monosynth. So to have an extra four on top of the one that already exists is mad. Um, so what, what might we want to do? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you um, maybe four examples of, of things where I think this is really, really useful. So we're going to make sure we're in motion mode. So the first one uh, I'm going to show you is, is um, quite basic, but I think it's really, really powerful. One of the tricks that I like to do on some of my other synths um, so, for example, the Novation A station is one of my other synths, uh, and that one per oscillator allows you to apply a pitch LFO. That's something I really missed on the monologue because the pitch LFO can only be applied to the overall pitch of the synth, so it's moving both VCOs at once. But what can be really, really cool is if you have an LFO just on one of the oscillators, so one oscillator is constantly drifting in and out with the other one. So let's just bring in our second VCO. I might even raise its octave a bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play, then I'm going to hit record, and as soon as I start touching a knob, it's going to start recording the motion sequence. Uh, so I'm going to grab the pitch knob. Okay, so what this now allows us to do is have a patch that we can play. Oh, make sure you turn key trig back on, sorry. Where the pitch of one of the oscillators is constantly drifting. That was probably a bit heavy handed, let's see if we can get that a little bit more subtle. That's quite cool. Nice in the lower octaves, those sort of evil kind of drains. Okay, so that's one real basic example. The other kind of basic example, uh, what we'll just do quickly here is we'll go into edit mode, make sure we are in sequence edit, and we're gonna head over uh, to this light here uh, where it has the motion clear, and I'm just gonna select clear out that motion. Okay, so we should be back to no movement there. Okay, so um, the next sort of obvious thing that you can do is uh, have bigger, longer, more evolving sounds by layering up a couple of slow movements. So um, let's start with our cut off a little bit lower down and let's see what we can do. Let's start with the cut off, so nice slow movements. Okay, let's maybe affect the shape of one of the VCOs. And maybe the other one as well while we're at it. Uh, we can even affect the drive if we like as well. Just before we set the grid, set that bottom. Okay, so now we've got this kind of evolving thing going on here. We can turn on the key trig and we can make use of it.
And, and also remember, just because we've sent a motion sequence somewhere, doesn't mean we can also send. We can't also send the LFO there. So if we wanted to select the cutoff LFO, uh, kind of a slow triangle wave. Almost sort of bass pad sounds. Great. Okay, so let's um, clear all of that out by going into the sequence clear again. Okay, so we should be back to a basic patch. Turn our LFO back on. Cool. Okay, so uh, trick uh, number three to go with this is... Um, emulating a type of LFO which is missing, which is a sample and hold. Sample and hold sounds uh, great sort of retro uh, effects, and it's sorely missing from the monologue, if I'm honest. Now, to do the sample and hold, we, we're going to work a little bit differently, which is that um, we want to do block changes for each step. And the way that we do that is we hold down a step and then move a knob, and then the next one. I'm just going to randomly select values going across all the steps on my cutoff. Maybe there. Cool. Now if I play that back. That great classic sound. But because we've got four channels, why stop there? Let's do the same thing with resonance. Just randomly picking resonances. Screechy high ones there. We done, and there we go. But we've got four channels, why stop there? Let's uh, let's do the same thing with the shape control for each of the oscillators. Okay, again, just randomly selecting, because of course sample and hold is um, based off a random source, so we should be doing it sort of as random as we possibly can. That's one of the shape controls, let's do the other one as well. So all of these timbral changes, which don't all necessarily line up, are going to contribute to real interest. Let's try that. And of course we can change the tempo of our LFO by changing the tempo control for the sequencer. And just like before, remember that just because we are affecting something with the motion control doesn't mean we can't affect it with the LFO. So again, let's put a big long um, cutoff sweep in so that we've got that extra amount of evolving sound and it won't always line up with the different um, iterations around the sequencer. Awesome. What a great sound. Okay, so um, one last little trick that might uh, appeal to certain people is that we can use this to try and emulate kind of glitchy kind of sounds where the uh, the synth is kind of sounds like it's breaking almost. So we should be back at our oh, sort of basic patch if you like. Uh, so for this one I'm just going to hit play and record in various different changes.
that's probably mad enough. So turning the key trick back on. We may even want to uh, make some of these changes a bit more steppy. So maybe where I've got the pitch here, I might do like a couple of whole octave jumps here and there. So you can really spruce up your your patches by adding so much movement and you can still play the patches with all these movements uh, in place. It's very addictive, sorry. Um, bit of a longer video this one, but uh, I hope you can see that there's just so much that you can do uh, when you start to approach the motion sequencer in this way. Um, we're only really scratching the surface here. Remember that any of these controls can be modulated. So, um, you know, if, if you want to uh, even change the waveform or turn on sync or ring on certain steps, that's all, that's all possible. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoyed that and found that useful. If you did, then please hit that thumb button and give it a like. And also make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more videos concerning the Korg monologue and all the other synthesizer stuff that we've got coming up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you again soon.